Hello everyone, it's Leon here and welcome to the new show. This week we've got new info from EA on Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Activision speak up on all that hate for the Infinite Warfare trailer. But first, let's find out more about Battlefield 1's World War 1 setting and hero. EA has announced a new battlefield and surprise, it's set in World War One. So forget assault rifles, laser targeting and jets and think more about horses, zeppelins and trench raiding clubs, which are basically sticks with nails in. Argonne in France, the Italian Alps and the Arabian Desert are all currently revealed locations, but perhaps the most interesting tease so far is a black soldier used prominently in all the marketing, including a 14 inch statue in the collector's edition. So who is he? Well, a leaked retail display confirmed DLC inspired by the Harlem Hellfighters, also known as the 369th Infantry. They were the first African African American regiment to serve in World War I, and that Hellfighter's name was given to them by the enemy because holy shit were they hard. They fought for over six months longer than any other American unit and never let a man be captured or lost an inch of ground. There's no way of knowing if that pack shot star is based on a real soldier, but if it is, my money's on Henry Johnson, who, after his gun broke, fought off over 20 Germans single handedly using his rifle as a club, a knife, and some grenades. He was injured 21 times repelling that attack, and he became the first American to earn France's highest honour, the Cross de Guerre. He also got a Purple Heart in 1996, a Distinguished Service Cross in 2003, and in 2015, President Obama awarded him the Medal of Honour, where the citation noted, he took his knife and stabbed it through an enemy soldier's head, which sounds like a QTE to me. The single player campaign is promising multiple perspectives, so we'll see other characters, but things are certainly off to a good start. Now in other news, Batman Arkham HD collection has all but been confirmed via a leaked pack shot and June release date in a Warner Brothers magazine. You can now sign up to test Fallout 4 mods on Xbox One if you head over to Bethesda.net. And two sources are talking up an appearance for Prey 2 at E3, supporting rumours that Dishonored developer Arkane picked up the title after it was previously canned. Now in in case you missed it, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has been announced and, well, some of you like it about as much as a good poke in the eye with a sharp stick. The trailer's been racking up the dislikes and last time I checked, it currently has around 2 million thumbs down. Why? Well, if you ask me, people just like being dicks, but the hate was enough that Activision actually had to answer questions about it in one of those boring investor calls where they talk about money. During the meeting, CEO Eric Hirschberg was asked directly about the YouTube reaction and said, you've got to love the passion. There aren't many entertainment franchises that can generate the kind of passion that Call of Duty can. He also pointed out that the first trailer for Black Ops 2 also had the most dislikes of any Activision game when it was revealed. And that went on to gross over $500 million, making it the most successful launch of all time until some Grand Theft Auto 5 thing came along. Activision also revealed last year that Blops 2 still has about 11 million players. So, you know, haters are going to hate, everyone else is apparently going to play COD. And while nearly 2 million people have clicked dislike on Infinite Warfare, nearly 20 million people have watched the thing, so 90% of you didn't go near the bad thumb, which is that one. Now, if you have thoughts on Call of Duty, Battlefield, or anything else in this week's show, let me know via Twitter, at Leon Hurley, or at GamesRadar. Good news if you're wanting to play as Rey, Finn, Poe or Kylo in Star Wars Battlefront. EA has confirmed there's a second game on the way and it'll be using content from the new movies. In another one of those financial calls, it's that time of year, EA CFO Blake Jorgsen said, and I quote, Next year we will see Star Wars Battlefront back with bigger and better worlds because we now have the new movies to work off, not just the historical movies we used before. Now everyone's taking that to mean Star Wars Battlefront 2, but there is just a matter of the dates. Jorgsen said next year, but financial years work differently. EA has just started its financial 2017 for example, so we don't know if he means next year our time or next year financial time. The next Star Wars movie, Episode 8, is also due out in December next year, so it would make sense that the new game could be 2018, especially given the current game's DLC plans for a major expansion next year, and Yorkson's mention of movies, suggesting Episode 7 and 8 are on the cards. Rogue One's not likely to get a look in as it's in a different timeline and Disney do not like crossing the streams. That was one of the reasons there was no new movie stuff in Battlefront 1. And that's not the end for Star Wars, oh no, EA has tons of the stuff. There are two third person adventures on the way, one next year from ex-Uncharted director Amy Hennig and the old Dead Space studio, and Titanfall developer Respawn is making another one with the director of God of War 2, although that's not been dated yet. Basically, from next year onwards, there's going to be force all over the place, seriously everywhere. On that note, that's all I've got time for this week. Drop a comment in if you have any questions, and I'll see you soon.